thank you, Dr. Rossi, for spending some time uh, getting interviewed from us today, and, and welcome. Thanks for having me, Lonnie. Okay. So, you know, um, Ethan, you know, you, you're, you're someone that, um, you know, I've had a pleasure of getting to know already for a few years, and, um, and you know, I know that uh, you're very passionate about what you do, and, and I love taking people up to see your lab. It's, it's a fascinating lab. It's, it's visually one of the most impressive things to see for people and, and for us as well. So, but it's so complicated. I mean, the science behind what you're doing is, is amazing and complicated. Um, what ever inspires you to get into this level of science and, you know, and staying in the field of, of academic and academic medicine uh, the way you have? That's a great question, Lonnie. And, um, you know, I, I would say that I took sort of a, um, a different path maybe towards my final um, research interests um, that really evolved over many years. I had become very interested in visual perception as an undergraduate. Um, I knew that, you know, of the, of the sensory systems, um, that the visual system was, was very intriguing. Um, to me, and I, I sort of sought out some opportunities to get involved with some vision research at the Center for Visual Science at the University of Rochester as an undergraduate. I worked in Walt Mackis's lab um, for a couple of years as an undergrad and got exposed to an optics laboratory and, and doing some uh, really cool optical experiments where we were bypassing the optics of the eye to present this fringe, this interference fringe on the retina to to measure, vis measure visual resolution and see how well people could see when the optics no longer um, obstructed their vision. Um, and then later on, um, after my undergraduate um, training, I worked as a research assistant for a couple of years in a lab at Smith Kettlewell in San Francisco. And uh, during that time, I got really interested in the eye movements. I was working with Joel Miller there at Smith Kettlewell and um, he was a biomechanics expert. And, and um, I, I enrolled at Berkeley through the connections I developed through, through his lab. Um, and, you know, the vision science program there is, is very diverse, and I had a lot of opportunities to rotate in different labs as a, as a PhD student. I went in thinking I'd be in an eye movements lab, but I gravitated back towards um, vision and, and visual performance um, in Austin Rorta's lab. And walking into his lab in Berkeley in 2004 um, was, was eye-opening um, to see the technology that he had developed and brought with him from Houston, but originally from Rochester, where that technology was born and, and developed adaptive optics for, for the eye. Um, we didn't use it so much for imaging there. We were using it to present stimuli to the retina that were of higher resolution than the eye could ever see. Um, and so sort of continuing along the lines of some of the things I was first interested in as an undergraduate. And then, um, you know, from there, I, I became more and more interested in, you know, understanding how the brain and the visual system can, can perceive information that um, is no longer impaired by the optics of the eye. But as I work more and more with this imaging technology, I began to see not only applications for basic science to understand vision, but really all these potential applications for understanding visual dysfunction and, and understanding um, how the retina is, is altered in disease states. And so not only were we looking at normalizing their performance, we also started to look at diff some different disease states. Um, and that led me more to get into interested in the imaging side and the instrumentation side. And that's where at Rochester that I began to, uh, you know, develop um, new techniques for imaging um, and became more interested in the instrumentation and what we could potentially do with it. Um, and now in my own lab, I've sort of put pieces of all that together. We're doing work studying eye movements. We're uh, looking a little bit at visual performance, but a lot in structural imaging and understanding how cell mosaics are altered in different disease states. Um, a couple of the techniques that I developed at Rochester that I've patented now, I've brought and really fully fleshed out in my own lab um, so that they're really useful for clinical use. So that was probably a lot longer than, than you wanted to hear about how I got to this um, area, but, um, you know, that's sort of the, the path I took. Well, actually, you kind of helped me with the next question, honestly, because I, I, you know, how does it apply to the, the clinical work that, um, that your lab uh, is participating in, and how can this kind of imaging make an impact for patients? 
that's an area that we're really excited about. And, you know, from, uh, from my perspective, what we're trying to do is to be able to give the clinician better tools to make patient care decisions. So, you know, clinically, when we're in the, the clinic, we're sort of limited in, in the capabilities of what we can image and what we can see. Um, so the ophthalmologist can look inside your eye and, and see many changes due to different disease states or infection or whatever it may be. Um, but they're limited in their ability to really see fine scale detail. So unlike with uh, you know, tissue that's outside the eye, we can put it under a microscope and we have these beautiful, perfect optics that were designed to, to image that, that um, structure. But when we look through the eye, we have to look through the optics of the eye. Um, and so a lot of the work that we've done is figure out how, when we're imaging through the optics of the eye, can we see things that we can't see in the clinic? Um, and how do we begin to visual th visualize things we've never seen before? Um, the ability to go down the cellular resolution allows you to do things that you wouldn't be able to do previously, which we're excited about, which is to be able to see for new types of treatments um, that are really, you know, cutting edge treatments like gene and cell based therapies. We can go in with our technology and really see whether those cells are going to the places we expect them to and whether those genes are uh, altering the retina in the way that we expect. Um, and so I think it, you know, it just is an opportunity to provide the clinician with a much richer and um, detailed set of tools to evaluate their patients um, and make, make be better patient care decisions, you know, being informed with that new information that's exciting. I mean, you know, certainly um, in advancement, I know that Dr. Sahel is very um, excited about, and, and the reason he brought you here is his very first recruit. And, uh, and I know that that's also a, a very, uh, you know, that's work that they've done very extensively in Paris at the Institut de la Vision. So, so um, and obviously it has great clinical implications. So if you were looking at what you've done and, and you know, you're, you're still young and you've done a lot already, and, um, and, but, uh, you know, some of the things that you've already looked at and, and have been able to add to this field is it's a new and growing field, you know, um, uh, you know, you, you can really claim for yourself, I imagine. So what are the things that you would say you're most proud of, um, in terms of what you've accomplished, uh, professionally? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I haven't really thought carefully about that, but, you know, I think like, if I, if I were to pick, you know, maybe one or two things, I guess they would be more some of the technology development stuff that, that we've done. So one of the things that I was able to do um, as a postdoc was to devise a new way for detecting backscattered light um, coming from the retina to allow us to visualize structures that had been historically very difficult to image. So because light has to uh, tra transmit through many different layers of cells to reach the back of the eye where the photoreceptors reside, these, these neurons that exist in the retina in the light path before the photoreceptors are transparent. Um, and that's great for vision, but it's really awful for imaging. Um, and so I devised a technique that allowed us to visualize the inner retinal neurons um, for the first time in the living eye. And we did that uh, without contrast agents, I should say. Um, and for the first time in the living human eye. Um, and that was a really exciting development um, for me personally, because it had been an elusive target of ours for many, many years. And, and many of the people that I admired and respected in the field had, had tried to, to do it and, and had failed. And so, you know, that achievement was, um, was substantial. Now, it wasn't too long afterwards before others were able to, to build on that work and demonstrate um, other methods for, for visualizing those cells and, and improved upon um, what we had done. But that was a big um, accomplishment for me and one that I'm really proud of. Um, I will also say that the work that we've been doing with age-related macular degeneration to be able to detect some of the most important cell classes for that disease 
um, and do it in different ways and do it more routinely um, through my autofluorescence imaging work and some of the technologies I've developed there. Um, I'm also um, very pleased with you know what we've done there, but um, I feel like I'm just at the beginning of my career still, and, and I feel like there's still um, a lot more discoveries to come, and uh, hopefully there'll be you know many more exciting things along the way. So I'm sure there will be, and and you know, tell me because when uh, Dr. Sahel talked about coming to Pittsburgh and what he was building here. Um, what was it specifically that, that convinced you that you would move to a city you've never you know, lived in before and, and start a new life here? It was really Dr. Sahel's vision that, um, that inspired me to, to come to Pittsburgh and come to a place that was really in the midst of, uh, um, you know, a big change. Mm -hmm. um, you know, his uh, style of leadership was something that uh, I also had admired through my interactions with some colleagues that have worked with him um, in France. Uh, and, you know, it really struck me in discussing with him where I thought the work that I was doing would be valuable um, for ophthalmology. He, he saw that immediately, you know, he had the vision and, and knew um, that the, the therapeutics and, and all of the new technologies that were being developed for vision restoration required advanced imaging to, to evaluate their efficacy and to define the patients um, and phenotype them appropriately to understand which treatments were appropriate for them. And so it was like, it was immediately clear to me that we shared the same objective. And, um, and I, I had, from some of my experiences in the past, um, had known that it is challenging to bridge the gap between basic science research, technology development, and, and the types of you know, um, work that I've been doing in the past, and, and bridging that gap to clinical science and, and that sort of translational space um, is, is a space that, you know, we've all been encouraged to work at, at that interface between, you know, clinical medicine and basic science and technology development and engineering. Um, but, but, you know, we've always approached it from our own perspectives. And I think that Dr. Sahel is unique in that he can see it from all the perspectives, not just from the medical side, not just from the basic science, not just from the engineering, but he fully understands all the pieces that are needed to, uh, to be able to accomplish some of these, you know, really lofty goals that we have for, for ophthalmology um, uh, over the next, you know, decade or so. And, uh, and so it just, it seemed like the perfect fit for me. I was also excited by um, the fact that he was planning to bring in more retina specialists and really build up the retina um, side of the department, which had already been strong previously in other areas. Um, and so I was really excited to be part of, you know, this dynamic and, um, you know, growing group of investigators that were, you know, had their own areas of expertise and interest, but that were also synergistic with my own interests. Um, and I just felt that it, you know, would be a, a the right environment for me. Um, and and I, I'm glad I made the decision. I, it was the right one. So. Well, I'm glad you made the decision as well. And, and you know, um, I think you kind of answered the, the last question I had for you, although I'll let you elaborate if you'd like. You know, what do you think about the future in terms of what we're doing here in Pittsburgh? And is there anything that particularly excites you about it? Um, I mean, I'm really excited to get us all under one roof. Um, that's really exciting to me. The the new facility that's being built, I think, is is going to be important for you know, a number of things, but um, I, I'm excited about having all of the investigators and all the clinicians working together under one roof. I think that that's going to be a major accelerant. Um, the, uh, the other piece, I guess, that I'm really excited about is the opportunities that exist to share um, technologies and resources and information and techniques and methods across the Atlantic with our neighbors. 
um, in, in Paris and our colleagues that we've been collaborating with there over um, the past several years. I, I think that that's only going to um, get closer and closer over time. And, and I've been uh, really excited about the possibilities that we have for bringing some really new and innovative technologies here from uh, the labs at the um, Institut de la Vision in Paris. So I think that those two things are really exciting for me. Um, and uh, I think it's going to open up a lot of opportunities from, for some really um, exciting science. Um, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited to be a part of all these, you know, new treatments and therapies like that, uh, that all of, you know, my amazing colleagues are developing now. Um, we're not developing any, but we want to see them work and we want to use our technologies to uh, evaluate uh, all these, you know, exciting and promising new, new um, vision restoration techniques. So I'm really excited to be a part of that and, and play the small role that we do with our imaging and being able to um, help in, in and speeding us towards, you know, um, our goals of being able to restore vision in as many cases as possible. Dr. Rossi, thank you. Thank you so much for coming to Pittsburgh. Thanks for all you're doing. And thank you for spending time with us today. My pleasure, Lonnie. Thank you. Okay. You take care.